Hey what's going on guys? In this tutorial series we're going to be looking at how to use the Regal 1102E oscilloscope. In this first video we'll be going over an overview of the scope as well as the initial setup and calibration of the probe. Okay so here's an overview of the scope. On top you have the handle. On the left side you have your power input. On the back you have the USB device port, the RS-232 port, and the pass-fail output port. On the right side is the fan, and on the bottom you have the stands to raise the scope. Okay, let's look at the buttons of the scope. The buttons are organized as follows. Starting from the top right corner, we have the two run controls, the six common menu buttons, and the multi-function knob. In the middle, you have your menu buttons, the vertical controls, the horizontal controls, and the trigger controls. On the bottom, you have the probe compensation, the external trigger input, the signal input channels, and finally, the USB host. Okay, let's turn on the scope. To make sure that everything is set to factory default, press storage, select waveform. Using the multifunction knob, scroll down to factory and click into select. Then press load. Let's take a look at our probe. The probe consists of the retractable input tip and the ground lead. This right here is a built-in capacitor, which is used to calibrate the probes. In the center, you have the attenuation switch, which can be switched from 1x to 10x. For our applications, we'll be using the 10x mode, so switch it to 10x if it isn't already set. Finally, at the end of the probe is your BNC connector, which gets connected to your scope. Go ahead and connect it now to channel 1. We're going to connect the probe to the built-in square wave. The ground lead gets connected to ground and the input lead to the input square wave. Then select channel 1, click on probe and select 10x. To turn on and off the menu button at any time, you can click this button here. Next click auto. This will automatically set your x and y axis to display the input. Once you see a square wave, you are done with the setup. Repeat this process for channel 2. If your square wave isn't perfect, you can use a non-metallic screwdriver to adjust the built-in capacitor until you see a perfect square wave. Okay, that concludes the overview and setup. In the next video, we'll start going over the vertical and horizontal controls.